Hi, this is a video about converting a tachometer from an RVI to an RVC. This is my 1969 Series 2 E-Type that I'm restoring. Uh, the tax that came with this car are called RVI. Some Smith tax are called RVI and that is a current based tack uh, that um, uh, works fine with points but this car was converted to electronic ignition by the previous owner and the signals from the electronic ignition are not detected by the stock tack so you've got to convert it from an RVI to an RVC and that's what this video is about oh let's get one thing out of the way kinda of tongue-in-cheek um, the Brits like to call this a taco but a taco is something, it's a Mexican fast food that you eat and that you don't mount in your car. This is a tack or a tachometer. Um, and you can look that up, it's probably in the Bible or something. Well, maybe not. All right, all kidding aside, here we go. Uh, this is the tack, and if I'm gonna bring it up close, I wanna, can you see the word RVI in there? RVI, that means it cannot be used with an electronic ignition system. Uh, the signals generated by that will simply not be detected by this uh, tack. So you got a couple of options. Uh, you can buy an electronic converter that connects to the outside of the tack uh, that converts the signal. But the problem is these are pretty old electronics. The circuit board inside may not be working very well. So the other option is is to buy new guts for this thing and they're essentially an RVC guts. They convert it from an RVI to an RVC and that's the better option because in my opinion, because it's really not any harder to do uh, from what I can see from the from the instructions. At the same time, you don't risk uh, dealing with an old capacitor or transistors or whatever is on here. It's pretty old stuff, and if the guts in here are not correct, then your conversion box on the outside will not work. So, um, that's what I did. That's what I liked it to do. And that, I bought this new circuit board from a company called Spida online. I want to make sure that's in focus for you. And I'll bring that package up a little closer. There you go. And you can get that online. Um, there are circuits that you can wire yourself and I don't know why anyone would want to do that because this is so reasonably priced. I think I paid $60, $65 with shipping all the way from from Britain to here uh, to the United States. And when you get that, and by the way the folks there have so far been more than helpful um, in giving me the instructions on this because I really I mean I know a little bit about electronics but I'm no expert um, they've they've been extremely helpful very responsive very polite when you order the kit you get this little vacuum packaged thing and this is the guts of the this, this is the electronic this is the new electronic circuit board that you get with it and you get a screwdriver miniature screwdriver and you get this this little cable and what this does is it connects to a computer and then you connect this to the circuit board and you can calibrate your tack so that it reads accurately um, at various RPMs. So that's the kit. First step right now is uh, on the on the tack um, is to what you do is this is the basil or bezel um, and you twist it and sometimes it's a little easier said than done. Here we go that comes off. And that's the internal right there. Holder here can be twisted. Take that off. You can take the glass out. You have to bend these tabs. Really, you can just leave it in there and just clean it if you wanted. Uh, but now's the time when all this is apart to clean that. I'll put that aside for the moment. All right, the next step is to um, take off these two face screws and I'll take that first one off put your fingers around it just to stop it from I got the other one out there we go okay next thing I'm gonna do before I take that needle off I may be doing this in the wrong order but such as it is there are some screws here on the back two of the screws as you can see mount to the back to this housing so I'm gonna take off this pigtail that uh, wire and I'm going to undo these screws and 
that's it. When you do that, off comes the housing. All right, next step is to get this uh, needle off, and it is um, press fit on, but again, I don't want to risk scratching the face. I made myself a little tool, um, thin. You could use two popsicle sticks to pop it off on each side, I've heard. Uh, I had some 1 16th inch plate. This is a fiberglass plate called FR4 or G10 uh, circuit board material. And I'll come up close here and just show you what I did. I, I just, see it's very thin. Um, I cut a slot in there to go so that it'll go behind uh, the needle. So on one side, I'm going to insert a piece of paper and I'm going to come in from here and try and gently, but let's see, come on you, and there it comes, perfect, comes right off. The trick here now is to um, remove this circuit board, this is the old circuit board, we want to get rid of this, we want to pull it away from this back panel which we're going to keep, so this and this we're going to keep, that's the movement, and that's the old circuit board, so we're going to have to cut some wires. This is the coil movement of the uh, tack, tacko tack. We're going to cut the wires close because we're going to solder new wires onto there. And I'm going to go here. Those are cut. And at the back of the uh, the back of this assembly, this is the power input. That's your main 12 volt power input right there. That. In my case, it's got a green wire coming up. I'm going to cut that wire. Uh, I'm going to cut it over here because I'm going to have the new wire attached. There we go. That is cut. Now, in my case, not all tacks are like this, but um, this is the input sense coil. This is what the tack senses from the input, from the, from the coil, from the ignition coil. And this is the input right here. Oftentimes it's just one wire, one bullet connection, which makes things easy. In my case, I've got a sense pickup, a kind of an induction pickup here with two wires on it. There's two wires coming from this input coil. I'm going to cut both of them, a red wire and a, and a black wire. And I'm going to cut them here by the capacitor. And it is, there's the existing movement. And this is the old, and it's sayonara to the old circuit board. All right, next thing I'm going to do is deal with this coil right here. I'm going to do that by undoing this tiny little nut right here. Loosening that up, and it's gone. Here's the new circuit board, and it's uh, much simpler, of course, an IC circuit. We're going to fit the board like so on here. And there's, use the old screw slots right here. So drop the screw in, drop the second one in here. You don't have to be torqued on too tight. The new circuit board is on and that's what it looks like. Now we're going to solder the wires. So, remember the two thin wires, the two thin red and black wires, connect to the movement, the needle connection, the, that's the movement. And then the thicker red wire connects to the power input, the 12 volt power input, that's that tab right there of the coil. So that goes to here. That's what we're going to be doing. And remember the three steps of um, soldering, and those are to num step number one. Is to flux the connections. I add flux. So I'll add flux to this little wire connector, this little wire connector. I'll add flux to that, into that wire. Flux to this. This is the thicker red wire that's going to go to the power input. Okay. And I'm going to that's already soldered there, but I'm going to add some... After you've added the uh, flux, then you 
burn it off with your soldering iron. The second thing is to tin, <coughs> tin the end of the wire, and that means taking a little bit of solder, just a bit of, I'm at an awkward position here, so my hands are going to shake. Tin the end of the wire. Then the last step is to actually solder it. And we do that by taking a little blob of 6040 rosin core solder. And I will connect that on. There are one, two, three, four input paths on the board. One, two, three, four. The fourth pad, this is the one closest to the IC integrated circuit, furthest away from this thick red positive power connector that's already attached to the board. That fourth one right there, that's for calibration. I'll put C for calibration. So you're going to put your calibration wire on there, permanently solder it, have it coming out of the tachometer. The third pad, I'm not quite sure what it's for. It says it's a square wave connector uh, for a switched 12 volt. Um, source. Not quite sure what that is. Uh, I would invite you to check with the manufacturer on that. Not going to worry about that one. That leaves you with two connections. The first one is for a high voltage coil. The second is for a normal voltage coil. I checked, I emailed them, I said, you know, which one, how do I know which one it is? They said, well, just try both. Well, I'm going to try the first one. Since it can handle high voltage, I'm going to try it first. So that red wire that goes from the negative of the coil inside of the tack it's going to be soldered to one of these. I'm going to try this one first. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, I'll try it on the second one. What I'm going to do now is uh, attach a wire to this terminal, this fourth one, which is furthest from this power input wire, that thick red wire, and closest to this chip right here. I'm going to attach a wire to that because that's my calibration cable. And we have a connection. Now it's time to uh, power up <clears throat> the tachometer to make sure everything's okay. And what I'm going to do here is I've got a uh, I don't know if you can see that battery on screen, but that's the edge of my battery right here. I've got a uh, red connection on there. So I'm going to connect the red, the positive, to this terminal. That's the positive spade terminal on the back. So that's positive. And then negative is to the chassis, to the body of the unit. I'll come around this way. And there it is. Did you notice that the meter moved slightly? Let me zoom in a little closer if I can. I don't know if I can or not. As close as I'm going to get. All right. Have a look at that. Um, have a look at this mechanism right down here. See, it moves pretty freely. It moves. Let me just get this wire out of my way. It moves quite freely. So when I connect, if you notice, the meter moves a bit, but now when it's connected, it still moves very smoothly. That's very important because if it doesn't move smoothly, it just kind of feels like it's pinned towards the bottom, then you've got these two wires crossed. You need to put this red over here and that black over here. The meter's wired up backwards, but in this case, it's fine. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to calibrate this thing. That's, that's really the next step. <clears throat> 